What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize skull and bones for the best possible performance so you can get the most out of it. Do keep in mind this video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find related videos for optimizing Windows, Nvidia, etc. We're going to be focusing completely on the game in this video. A quick thank you to Ubisoft for providing me access to the game. All right, sweet. There we go. We're past the tutorial and... On land here, we're getting a solid 53-ish FPS. It's okay, input feels a little bit slow, but of course we are running at native resolution, which is 2K on my 3080 Ti. If we get back to the water instead, we drop to a solid 50-47-ish. It's relatively good, but again, we're running at native resolution. By default, even some kind of upscaling is enabled. Of course, there's not too much going on here. There's a few islands, a couple of other players, so staying close enough to this island for our NPCs to stay loaded in, but of course, keeping some other ships around us, we can get a relatively good benchmark of how the game's going to perform when we're sailing around away from this little tutorial island. So we're getting a solid 54-ish, let's look over here, 50-ish FPS. Let's try and work around with some of the options. I'll pause, settings, followed by visual, and in here we can adjust some of our display settings. Window mode, while I usually recommend choosing full screen, we only have borderless and windowed. Active monitor, pretty obvious. Aspect ratio as well, but resolution should match your displays. If you have a 2K display, set this to 2K, 1080, 1080, etc. V-Sync should definitely be turned off, but you can enable it if you're getting screen tearing where the top and bottom half of your monitor don't seem to match up. Field of view is your preference, and while it may technically affect frames, I would definitely recommend having this set to whatever you prefer for the best gameplay experience over raw FPS numbers. Finally, FPS limit should be turned off when you're trying to gauge how good the performance is on your system while you're messing around with settings. You can later come back and enable the FPS limit to save extra power, generate less heat, etc. Once you're done on the visual or display tab, we can save with F and head across to graphics at the very top. In here, we can customize our options between all of the presets for which we have ultra high, where we're getting a solid 60-ish over the, where we're getting a solid 60-ish over here and uh, 53, 54. Ish. But remember, the difference between ultra high and the custom that I just had was that we're not using any kind of upscaling. So if I turn off upscaling, suddenly we drop to 51 ish, not a huge performance increase. Then we have very high, which leaves our upscaling on quality, for which we go up to around 60 ish here, looking over to the ships, 54, 55 ish. High drops us to upscaling balanced and takes us up to around 66 ish over the ships and over land here, 73 ish. Medium takes us to performance upscaling, and we're now at around 84, 85-ish FPS over the ships and over this little bit of land, 93-ish. At this point, it definitely feels like most, if not all, input latency is gone, and it feels a lot better than the higher options. Finally, low keeps us on performance mode and drops everything else as low as it can go for the most part. Looking over the ship, 96-ish FPS, and over land here, 96 again. But of course, we've lost a lot of fidelity. The water looks kind of different, but if this is something you need to play on, then it's here for you. We'll be working our way up from low just so we can see the impact of all of our different options. The first major option we can mess around with is adaptive quality. If we turn this on, you'll see that it sets the upscaling mode to adaptive and it'll try and keep your frames around whatever goal you have set here. So if we change it all the way to ultra high and enable adaptive quality for 60 FPS, it'll try and change our upscaling mode to get us all the way up to 60 FPS with all of our graphics options pushed as high as possible. If you set this to very low, then enable adaptive quality, all of your options will still be on low, but it'll mess around with the upscaling just to try and keep you at your goal here. Um, for the most part, I'd recommend leaving this off, playing around with the rest of your settings and coming back here only if you really need it. Shadows is going to be one of the biggest options and that's why it's all the way up at the very top. Between low at 96-ish FPS, we go to medium, 95-ish, over land, 96, 93-ish, high, drops us to 89, and very high, 88-ish. With a range of around 10-ish FPS, which is a solid 10% of your performance, you really want to try and keep this as low as possible. And on the right-hand side, you get a really good visual representation of each of these options so you can better choose what works for you. Personally, low is probably good enough, but we lose a lot of major shadows like around the roof here. So if you're someone who's playing for more of a scenic look, keep it on medium at lowest. Otherwise, low for the best possible performance and a 10%-ish gain. I'd leave it on medium, but just so we can keep raw numbers, I'll set it back down to low. 
Scrolling down, upscaling type, we'll get back here in just a moment after we're done optimizing the rest of these options. We have a DLSS, Fidelity FX, and TAA. For now, I'll be leaving on TAA performance. Environment. We can move between low, medium, high, very high, and ultra high. That mainly just changes a lot of the vegetation, how the land looks, etc. If we have it set to low, we're sitting at around 98 ish, 99, and up to ultra high, we've moved down to 83 ish FPS. Again, around a 10 to 15% performance impact, but for the most part, land hasn't really changed too much here. If you're going to be spending most of your time doing PvP at sea, this is probably an option you'll want to have much lower just for much better PvP performance away from land. For this reason, I'd keep it on medium at highest or possibly even low if you're playing for the competitive edge. Then clutter. This mostly has to do with vegetation and, as you can see, it adds extra tufts of grass, etc. and high adds a whole bunch of lighting information that wasn't previously there. At low, Looking over the land here, we're getting 100 FPS, medium, and high, still around 100. There's not too much difference here, but for how the land looks, it's added a handful of growth and vegetation, etc. For the most part, low looks pretty good, so that's probably where I'll be leaving it throughout most of my competitive gameplay, if that's what I'm looking for. Water is probably one of the most major ones in this game, low, medium, and high. On high, there's a couple more caustic events, things move around a little bit differently, but there shouldn't be any competitive difference between low and high. For example, this is high, you can see things swimming around, and down to low, there's a little bit less information, and we only really gain 2-3 to three FPS. Not too much of a difference here. Screen space reflections are usually relatively cheap, and I'd recommend having them on to add a lot more life to the water, otherwise it seems a bit stuck in after the fact. If we apply them and head back to the game, you should see a great improvement in how things look. It's a bit shimmery over the water here, as we're rendering at a much lower resolution using an upscaler to get a lot of that information back. For the performance loss, i definitely recommend keeping it on just for how the game looks. For example, if we flick back to native, you should see a great improvement, but there's still a little bit of flickering here. Back to performance mode, we're at around 95-ish FPS. Volumetric clouds has a minor impact on how the game looks, to be honest, and if you prefer how it looks with them turned on, you'll be going from around 100-ish FPS to maybe 86-ish. There's a huge impact in this, even though there's not too many clouds around here. I mean, there's a big cloud for sure, but of course, depending on how you're playing the game, whether it's competitively or just for the looks, this option will either be on or off for you. Keeping it off though, the game still looks pretty good as is. There's only a minor difference. Then post-processing includes ambient occlusion, which adds better shadows and depth between objects and on themselves, depth of field, which may be something you like or not, this shouldn't be too expensive, and finally motion blur. This is entirely just a user preference thing. If we enable all of these and head back into the game, you'll see that our FPS is practically the same as what it was. Looking over the land, it's practically the same. There's not too much of an impact here, it's mostly just about your general feel while you're playing the game. If you suffer with motion sickness, this obviously may not be the best game for you with everything rocking around in the water, but looking around quickly with a lot of blur can be something that causes motion sickness in some people. You may want to turn this option off if you're sensitive to that kind of thing. Depth of field usually makes distant things look really out of focus, and here it's doing a little bit of that. I'd probably have this off, as I don't like feeling like I need to wear glasses while I'm playing my games. That being said, it's all user preference, and besides these last two, I'd just recommend having ambient occlusion on. With it on, we're around 95-ish, and off, we're practically at the same FPS. Just for the extra information this adds, I'd recommend leaving it on. Finally, ray tracing. Obviously, if you turn this on, things will look a little bit better, but any kind of ray tracing will tank your performance, and here, it's no different. We've dropped to around 92-ish FPS, but that's because RTX or ray tracing is being used very sparingly here. That's good, as it won't kill your performance entirely, but that does also mean that there'll be a very minimal impact on how the game looks with this option on versus off. As you can see, I'm around 92-ish FPS, where previously I was, what, 97, 8? But if you like the extra edge to visual quality, then this is definitely something you may want to consider. And with that, we've practically ran through all of the options here. So what would I recommend? Well, ray tracing probably off, ambient occlusion on, volumetric clouds medium, screen space reflections on, water probably low to medium, clutter doesn't really matter, but low is good for performance, environment details, low is okay, but maybe medium, and finally upscaling, you'd probably want to leave on quality or even native for 
any of the ones that you choose here. Let's quickly look through the different options. I'll push TAA to quality and we'll see what kind of performance we get here. So we're getting a solid 77 FPS and things look really good. Let's instead flick across to NVIDIA DLSS. This will only be available on NVIDIA graphics cards with RTX support. With this, we're getting a solid 84-ish FPS, but a lot of shimmering and things like that has disappeared, especially in the ropes, etc. This looks pretty good. FSR 2 quality, we're setting at a solid 82-ish FPS, and to me, this just looks a little bit sharper. It's definitely less blurry around practically everything, to be honest. FPS is a little bit lower at 80, 82-ish, but for the quality that we gain from using FSR over DLSS, I'd be playing with this anyways. Finally, back up to TAA quality, which is the only option that gives us access to native, we drop to around 74, 76-ish. So I'll be playing this game with FSR 2 quality at lowest. You can, of course, drop it to balanced if you need extra performance. This takes me up to 84-ish FPS and it still looks really clean. The more to the performance side you push this, the more weird visual artifacts you'll notice and things like that. Then shadows at the very top, I'd probably have this medium at lowest, as low just gets sort of too much, and everything above this only adds extra small edge details. For the extra performance, I'll be leaving it here. Unfortunately, with FSR2 and DLSS, we lose our adaptive quality, but if you're not going to be using that option anyways, which I won't be, it's no loss really. And that's it, we've practically optimized this game for the best performance, and it still looks really good to be honest. The input latency that I was complaining about earlier is all but completely gone, and FPS has improved quite drastically. For how the game feels versus what it felt like at the very start, there's a big improvement here. Beyond that, speaking about motion sickness and things like that, turning off camera shake in the gameplay tab can help improve things like that. And just for your information on the audio tab, if we scroll down, you'll find that by default your microphone is set to off. If you'd like to use it, you'll need to enable it here, and you can adjust the rest of the options down here, including enabling voice chat, but you'll need to get past the intro for this to work properly. Obviously, I am still in the tutorial section of this game, and as I progress further, my frames will differ, but everything that you learned from this little quick guide should apply to you practically anywhere that you are. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and happy sailing. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.